Can you hear me now? I can't remember the name of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode four of Sold Cloak. Hope everybody is doing good today. Hey, uh, Jack, you want to... Goodness gracious, my brain is all kind of spread you, out right now. Would you now. like me to uh, start us off in a word of prayer? <laughs> I think so. Okay. I think that's what I wanted. Yeah, how about you You pray and then I read? That sounds like a plan. You can make really good plans. Great. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for just another beautiful day and the fellowship that we get to have with uh, fellow believers and to come and just have productive discussions. Lord, we just ask that you would give us wisdom, uh, just help us have good judgment, and uh, to, just to understand the topics and be able to expound on them in a way that would be beneficial to the listeners. Lord, just once again, thank you for all that you do for us and just be with us today. In Jesus' name. All righty. I appreciate that. So today's topic is uh, like moral quandaries. Are you going to read the Constitution before yeah, we Yeah, but I'm going to let people know what it is so they, oh, don't, okay. they don't, you know, stop listening to the episode because all these people do is like pray and, you know, read constitutions and stuff. So we're going to give them a little teaser. So we're going to talk about <laughs> vigilantism and if it's right or wrong. And if we can finish that, which we won't, and we know that we won't, then we can move on to other moral questions, but we won't. So <laughs> here we go. We are in uh, the Constitution for the United States, Article 1, Section 3. <clears throat> Let's see if I can not botch this. The Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators from each state chosen by the legislature thereof for six years, and each senator shall have one vote. Immediately after they shall be assembled in consequence of the first election, they shall be divided as equally as may be into three classes. The seats of the senators of the first class shall be vacated at the expiration of the second year, of the second class at the expiration of the fourth year, and of the third class at the expiration of the sixth year, so that one-third may be chosen every second year. And if vacancies happen by resignation or otherwise, during the recess of the legislature of any state, the executive thereof may make temporary appointments until the next meeting of the legislature, which shall then fill such vacancies. No person shall be a senator who shall not have attained to the age of 30 years and been nine years a citizen of the United States and who shall not, when elected, be an inhabitant of that state for which he shall be chosen. The vice president of the United States shall be president of the Senate, but shall have no vote unless they be equally divided. The Senate shall choose their other officers and also a president pro tempore in the absence of the vice president or when he shall exercise the office of president of the United States. The Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the president of the United States is tried, the chief justice shall preside and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two thirds of the members present. Judgment in the cases of impeachment shall not extend further than the removal from office and the disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. But the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, trial, judgment, and punishment according to law. All right. There we go. And I think, what is it, one thing here has been changed. I got a little uh, note for two. Yeah, where it says that it's uh, in, in section... Three uh, part one, it says the Senate of the United States shall be composed of two senators from each state chosen by the legislature thereof. And that was changed at some point to make it to where we it's a popular vote that we choose them, which right. I kind of like the idea of going back to the way that it was. You know, you have the, the House reps are selected by popular vote and the senators are selected by the state government itself, by the legislature. But anyways, because it feels like we're doing the same thing twice. You know, we, we have two Well, the people houses. don't. Yeah, it's the. There's not as much distinction between the houses as there used to be. Yeah, it's a little bit strange. But of course, you know they were they were modeling it a little bit on the the House of Commons and the House of Lords, mm -hmm. which of course we don't have. Yeah. Um, so, but I think that was the compromise because you had some people that wanted a little more on the Democratic side, and some people wanted a little more on the Federation of multiple states side. You know, so the states are deciding what's going to happen, not the people deciding. So to compromise, I think they kind of just went with both. So any who's we're talking about vigilantism uh, today, and if it's if it's ever appropriate or if it's always wrong across the board. So, I have just a little bit here for uh, introduction to get us started. So, vigilante is a borrowed word from Spanish, and it means watchman. Of course, it's pronounced differently in Spanish, but we share that same common root with the English word 
vigilant, meaning watchful. In English, vigilante has a specific connotation now separate from its meaning uh, of watchman in Spanish. And a vigilante is one that attempts to bring about justice without going through the established judicial system. Typically, the reason for doing such is due to the perceived inadequacy of the established judicial system. Those that participate in vigilante justice would believe that they are more capable of serving justice themselves than if they left it to the courts. If this self-served justice is done solely for personal reasons, it would usually be called revenge. Revenge is not always done due to the absence of official justice, but sometimes just because the offended party desires to be the one dealing out the punishment. Vigilantism would not be vigilantism if there were no legal system above it in authority. Vigilantism is extra-legal. It is outside the existing law. So in situations like the times of the patriarchs in the Old Testament, since the highest authority in certain places and at certain times were the heads of households, if someone like Abraham or Isaac dealt justice in his household, like his family or servants, that would not count as vigilante justice since they would, in that case, be the established legal authority. So, what does the Bible say? Is vigilantism good or bad? What do y'all think right off? Any opinions going into it? As a general rule, I would say vigilantism is bad. And it would stay that way unless there is catastrophic failings in the official legal system. So, let's, you know, let's say you have a legal system where there are tyrants running the place there is no way to remove them they are you know going into houses let's say kidnapping people crazy crazy stuff but they are officially you know the government Mm -hmm. um you know in that sort sort of a situation you might be having vigilante justice against the perpetrators that are the people that have the badge you know and if it's that bad well of course you're you start asking yourself you know is it a legitimate government anymore you know where does that fall yeah. Is it yeah. vigilantism? But if, if you've already fully rebelled from the government and you're essentially at war with it, well, you've removed yourself from yes. the system yeah. already. And that's, so that's there is a little I, bit of Yeah, that's my opinion. Area. If you are in a situation where the established justice is so poor that it's not even worth dealing with, or maybe it's even dangerous, you don't want to get them involved because they'll just mess it up further then you really just need a new justice system. You know, you don't need to be going aside your justice system and keeping it the way that it is. You really just, you need to have a revolution or an independence or whatever it is you need to get a better system or just a redress of grievances. You know, that should be your first attempt to get a a good judicial system, you know. I think that's on the list of grievances for the U.S. um, Declaration of Independence that we weren't getting proper justice. There was multiple issues and we right. can see in our our uh, first ten amendments, the Bill of Rights, that there's multiple issues there dealing with justice, making sure that it's going to be fair, you know, because we were dealing with justice that wasn't fair. So, yeah, yeah. Well, what do y'all think on the other side of the table? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I would agree that biblically, and I think we covered this in a previous episode. If you have a good government in place that's doing its job, there's not going to be a need for that. Mm-hmm. And like when we covered capital punishment, yes, when you have a good, fair, and righteous government in place, then it's okay for them to have that um, recourse. But when you have a failed government or a corrupt government, a government that, um, like what we're seeing right now, where people who have really committed no violence against other people— mm-hmm. Um, and yet they are being dealt much heavier sentences than rapists and murderers, then we have a failed judicial system. Mm-hmm. And so in in that context, you are going to cause much disharmony among the people, and especially those who were victimized uh, by the crime and they see no real punishment or they see that. Yeah, he was kind of punished, but it was more just a slap on the wrist. The The punishment does not equal the crime. And so we have a situation where we have crimes that are getting much more punishment than they deserve mm-hmm. and crimes that are getting much less punishment than they deserve. One would almost think that it's a concerted effort to uh, incite rebellion. Right, because in in this situation we're talking about is – generally the victims of the crime that are not being punished 
are also the same general group of people who are being punished above and beyond for their perceived crimes. So you get the same person a lot of times sitting at their house thinking, you know, oh, someone burns down my store and, you know, no, nothing happens. But I show up to protest that happening. And now I've been hunted down, used phone records illegally. And now I'm in a jail cell for two and a half years and haven't gotten a trial yet. You know, or, you know, or your friend is that person and you're sitting there, you know, that, that it, you're getting it from both sides, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I was trying to think of some examples of this in a biblical situation. And we, I have two examples here of what I think would be uh, like a vigilante justice type situation. And then one as a, a contrast that would, that would be different than the two. So the first one is when Simeon and Levi kill Shechem and all the men of Shechem after he either rapes or seduces their sister Dinah. So in that situation, you have, and that's, that's in uh, Genesis chapter 34. So Dinah goes out and um, somehow ends up with, with Shechem. He wants to marry her. And then he goes and talks to Jacob and his sons. Jacob kind of doesn't really say anything and doesn't really do anything. And then his sons get really upset knowing what happened to their sister. And all of the sons, it looks like, made this deal with him. Hey, if, if all the men of the city get circumcised, then we'll let you marry our sister. And they're like, well, okay. So then they all go and get circumcised. And then just Simeon and Levi on the third day when they're all sore and, and bent over and just in their beds groaning, they go in there and just kill all the men. And they kidnap the women and the children as, as like servants or whatever and just take all the stuff and just totally pillage the place. And you're like, well, that just, that seems like it's a little bit of overkill. Like, I understand they were upset. And, and I know, like, you know, something's got to be done. But it looked like their dad didn't do anything about it. And he would be the legal authority in that circumstance. And um, and they took it into their own hands. Jacob was very unhappy with them because for a very dumb reason, it looked like. He's like, now you're going to make me unpopular around all the, all the other people. And, you know, they're going to want to go to war with me. It's like, that was your daughter? Okay, whatever, you know. But, uh. And then later, whenever he's uh, giving his his blessings to his sons, uh, Jacob, in Genesis 49, he's, he singles out Simeon and Levi for being like, well, he didn't have nice words for them. <laughs> so it looked like he always disapproved of it. But it never really says if, if what God said about it or thought about it, you know, was Jacob in the wrong for not doing anything? Were those two in the wrong for what they did? But um, Well, I think we do have God's thoughts on it in that... Judah was supposed to be, I'm not, Judah was the fourth born. Yeah. Reuben was the first born, and then came Simeon and Levi, and yet God chose to bring the line of the Messiah through Judah, and Reuben had sinned grievously, and Simeon and Levi had done this sin that was grievous, mm -hmm. and so that uh, line for the Messiah went down to the fourth born. So you're thinking definitely on this instance they did the wrong thing, but you think also that that Jacob did the wrong thing. I don't well, at know least that they. Think. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, you know, when God was looking to bring the Messiah, He yeah. brought it through the line of Judah, not through Reuben, not through Simeon, not through Levi. Hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. I know in Chronicles, I think it's First Chronicles. It's whenever it's giving the um, the lineage, it has a little like a um, note in there of it's talking about Reuben. It was saying that you know even though Reuben was the firstborn, he's he wasn't given the birthright that right. the birthright into the birthright went to Judah. But I don't think that it. I don't know if it specified why it wasn't given to Simeon and Levi, but it seems pretty obvious from from Genesis forty nine that they they were bad people and they didn't <laughs> need it. <laughs> See, that's why you have twelve sons. If you have the first, you know, three are awful. I mean, Judah wasn't even a good guy. He just wasn't as bad as the others. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Judah had his own issues. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he was not a but great. His issues were not as egregious as, as yeah. the others. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean that, that. I wonder like what what should have happened in that circumstance. So let's just say it makes it a little bit simpler. Dinah gets raped and. Obviously, all the brothers are upset about it, and they look to Jacob. Jacob doesn't do anything like what should be done in that circumstance. Well, I think, yeah. you know, the one who was guilty should have been punished rather than all of the men of 
that city and and they took their vengeance out on yeah. everyone instead of just kill, saying literally <laughs> okay we're gonna go get the one guy that really right. messed this up mm-hmm. and um so maybe that's why so they could have they could have ganged him in the field whenever they came to talk to him he probably had servants there to, to protect him but you know 12 on one well 12 on two because shagun's dad was with him so i don't <laughs> just, know just say just yeah. say they could, have, they could have got him. But yeah, I think yeah, it's definitely overkill what they did. I mean, if they should have done anything, like you said, yeah, it should have just been to check right. And the fact know. that they used uh, deceit. Right. They yeah, lied. I think that's they the were deceptive. Pro- and then they came in in the midst of that advantage and exercised excess judgment. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if they would have showed up to the town and said, send him out, this is what he did, mm-hmm. and we're going to kill him. And then the town said, no, we're going to protect him. And, yeah. then, and then they said, all right, well, we're coming in. And then whoever gets in the way gets killed. Then At least it would be straightforward and it'd honest. It would straightforward and honest. An and if they ended up yeah. killing the whole town to get to him, yeah. then, you know, that was their decision. That's that they not made. right. I mean, okay, so just because the king's son wants to marry some guy, you know, some, 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 you know, girl, you got to get your... Yeah, yeah, you know, that's that's already that's not fair. And then right. get killed for it and have your women and children stolen. That's just right, not yeah, right. It is, it is excessive. So, yeah. yeah. So, so... I would agree. I don't think. I don't think doing. I don't think punishing the guilty party in that situation as the brothers was stepping outside a line. Yeah. But you know, slaughtering people after lying yeah. it definitely was. Yeah. You got any thoughts, Hammond? Oh, we haven't introduced Hammond. He's a, another member of this most prestigious podcast. I would agree that maybe that was a little bit of a. I don't know the proper term. Maybe more of an. Uh, Excessive, excessive <laughs> approach. <laughs> excessive approach. Yeah, I would. I would agree. Not, instead of attacking the entire, going after that I mean, going after that entire party, going after the one guy that did the crime, did the problem. That's mm-hmm. that would make sense. Go after him. But the way they went about it, there there are definitely some issues. But you got to think also on a tactical, tactical thought process. That was really an effective maneuver. Yeah, it was. It was clever. Yeah. I mean, that was clever. They were, nev- was... they were never accused of being unintelligent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. La- it was, uh, the lack were... of intelligence was not the problem. <laughs> no, they were uh, pretty smart doing that. But yeah. no, I would agree that that was... intelligence. That's just so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Who's would... ever fallen for something like that? <laughs> that is, that's rough. <laughs> no, I would uh, I would say that that was probably a little little much. That was yeah. Little so excessive. the next example is actually much more difficult because that that first one is like okay, obviously it was a little extreme what they did. But the next mm-hmm. one is Absalom. Absalom kills his his half brother Amnon for li- like it straight up says you know that that Amnon raped Absalom's sister, which is Amnon's half half sister, but. So, you know, this is another type of situation. It, it's much more clear than the other one. We know that this is, you know, worst case scenario. And um, we definitely know, yeah, what, what, what this was, was was the wrong thing. And uh, so Absalom gets, gets horribly upset with Amnon. He hates him, but he doesn't do anything initially. And this isn't a secret. King David, you know, Absalom's dad, he hears about it and knows about it and is upset about it and doesn't do anything for two years. Like it wasn't like a new knee jerk reaction that Absalom did it, did this. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so for two years, just everything just kind of continues as it was like nothing ever happened, even though there was a crime committed. And then Absalom decides, okay, I'm going to throw a party. I'm going to invite all my brothers. And then I'm going to have my servants just kill Amnon just in front of everybody. And they're all having a party. He waits until Amnon's nice and drunk. And then he g- gives a sign. And this guys go over there and just, you know, shish kebab him or whatever. And then all the other brothers flee. They all freak out. And he doesn't kill anybody else. At first, David thinks that all of his sons are killed. Uh, but then he learns that, you know, okay, it was only Amnon. And then Absalom f- uh, flees, believing that, you know, his dad's going to be after them. And then once again, David doesn't do anything for, I think, three years. And Absalom is essentially just you know, in hiding, he's, he's banished until David's, uh, uh one of David's servants conv- convinces him to bring him back. It was never really addressed or handled right, which seems to be the thing that kind of pushes Absalom to start the civil war, bet- you know, against his dad, which in right. poorly, we know that Absalom makes a lot of bad personal life decisions after that point. Like he shouldn't have just usurped, you know, authority of his dad and then tried to, you know, go to war with him and all that kind of stuff. But this initial issue it seems a lot more difficult. Like, what should Absalom have done? Like, I don't know. Right, and of course, we're not privy to any of the conversations that might have happened. Mm-hmm. You know, because it, you know, Absalom, of course, should go to to his father first and say, 
hey, you know this happened. Mm -hmm. I know this happened. What is, you know, what, where is the justice? What are you doing about this? You know, there's, you know, there is a place to ask your father, you know, what is happening? Yeah. Is there something I don't understand? You know, and then we don't know if that happened. You know, we don't know what they could have said. And of course, you know, let's say you're Absalom and David is, says, well, I don't know how to deal with it. So I'm just going to ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. If that's what he's told. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very different than, you know, oh, we're, you know, I don't know what the other, you know, reasons would be or. Yeah. Yeah. This, and that's why when you are in a position of authority, you have to exercise that authority. Yeah. If you are in, a, in the position of authority, then you cannot just abdicate your position. You can't arbitrarily. Pass the buck. There's no. He's the king. Right. Who, who's who's going to deal with it if he's not going to deal with it? Right. You know. Right. And it happened within his own house. I mean, if right. this had happened anywhere else in the kingdom, a lesser judge could have taken care of it. Right. Somebody else. There would have been mm -hmm. other avenues of justice. But this was within his own house, within his own court, within his own family. Nobody else is going to, you know, take lead in this situation right yeah now what's what kind of confuses me a little bit when i read through this i'm i'm pretty convinced oh king david's doing the wrong thing he's not dealing with what he needs to deal with and um but there's a, a passage in um I, I can't remember where it is i don't know if i wrote it down here um oh yeah there's there's a um a passage in first kings 15 5 and it's it's talking about other things but it's talking about david this is after he passed away it says because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only for the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And that's, of course, with Bathsheba. So I feel like if God's wanting to say, oh, he did all, he, he did everything right except, and he gives one problem, I would imagine that he could have thrown in two or three problems, but that's the only problem that he, he well, kept says there. That he was, that he commanded him. Yeah. Right. But did and God it, specifically say, like, don't send Uriah out there to get killed? Or is that like, he should know that, you know, that's right, obvious. That's uh, pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. But also it seems pretty obvious, like, you should, like, handle your yeah. family situations and the legal situations. A crime was committed and you're the right. judge. But there, there's not, there weren't, you know, we, we know that David did not live perfectly aside from that. Mm -hmm. right? Like, a, a, you know, other than that, you know, he could have been the Messiah, right? We're not, yeah. There is there's a difference between, you know, making making mistakes and 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 disobeying direct yeah. orders. And I was right? kind of wondering a little bit if this is in some way lumped in with that because you know, we know that whenever he did commit that mm -hmm. sin with Bathsheba and having Uriah killed, that I think it was Nathan the prophet was saying that you know there will be all problems. These, there's going to be problems in your, your household. In your household, there's the sword right. isn't going to depart from your house. You know, right. you're going to have all these sorts of issues. And then we can see that the, the civil war with Absalom is a, a fulfillment of of that. So I'm wondering if is that if that's right. just like kind of lumped in together or something. And David may have thought, you know, this is this is God's judgment upon oh. me in my house. Yeah, right. And rather than dealing with it, he was, you know, maybe just accepting the judgment. Right. And um, you know, as a parent, it is much harder to discipline when you started the problem if you yeah. if you let's say you did something wrong right as, as a parent and you know you did something wrong and now there are new problems and um you know let, let's say you know I've, this is uh, a thing i've talked to a couple of uh, people with and uh, before they got saved you know they used to cuss a lot in, in front of their kids mm -hmm. all the time and now their kids cuss and then they got saved and they stopped and they're like, I can't, I can't get myself to, to make them stop and tell them it's wrong because I was the one that taught them to do it. And yeah. I feel like a hypocrite. Now, of course we know you can change and stop doing bad things and then you can bring your family along. You know, you could be an alcoholic and you could get saved and you could tell your children, Hey, I told you being an alcoholic was fine. I was wrong. You mm -hmm. can't drink in the house. You know, even though I let yeah. you before, you can't now, right? But it is really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you set up the problem and you know it, then the it's it's almost crippling. Like you can get anxiety about it. you just like mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. And I feel guilty 
punishing somebody else for something that I started. So you think David maybe had intended that he should handle it, but he just kept putting it off because it just caused him so much anxiety that he was just, and of course, as a king, you always have things to occupy your time. You're, oh, yeah. you're, you're busy dealing with all kinds of other matters. And so he could have just been telling himself, oh, I'll, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. And you have Absalom waiting for two years. And he's like, okay, Pops isn't getting around to it. You know. Mm-hmm. So you think in the situation of Absalom, he should have been more vocal with his with his father about, hey, you, you really need to deal right. with this. You know, This is still a, a ongoing issue that needs to be handled. I right. mean, let, that- let's say... Let's say King David said, "No, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not even. I'm not even going to like bring him to court and say that he's innocent or guilty. Just, I'm just not going to handle it. You know, like what should Absalom do or anybody else do in that circumstance? I wonder. Just let it sit and say, hey, that's not my authority. You know, my sister got raped, but can't can't do anything about it now. I don't know, but I mean, it's almost as though Absalom even waited too long, right, to deal with it. Like he should have went and talked to his dad, like." Today, you, you know, know, it happened today. You right. are gonna, you are gonna <clears throat> deal with it, right, pops? Right, you know? right. Yeah. yeah, and it's you know, two years. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. quite a long time to finally yeah. realize. Okay, nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna exact justice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he definitely later on in the in the story shows that he he is very presumptuous. He will do what he wants to do. Like after he came he came back. I think it was is the one of the servant of David's. Uh, he he. Uh, convinced David to bring him back. So Absalom was sitting there in his house for like three years and his dad never asks him to come to the palace or lets him come to the palace and, and to see him. And so he just sits there and then he's trying to get in contact with that guy and he keeps sending his servants over there. Hey, you know, ask that guy to come and talk with me. And the guy keeps saying no. And then he just goes and sets his his field on fire because they're next door neighbors or something like that. He's like, just set his his, his weed on fire. That'll get his attention. And then the guy comes, what are you doing? I just want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, Absalom was not a, a good person right. in that sense. Like, he, he was presumptuous, you know, so um, yeah, he would just take something in the, onto himself, you know, which of course makes sense that this is what he did because I feel like doing doing vigilantism is very presumptuous. It's, I'm going to do this. I'm not waiting on anybody else right, to, I'm gonna step to do in. It, you know, so Right. But so the big question we're going to ask, though, is in this, is there ever a time when it is the right thing to do? Is it the right thing to do to step in and take authority when it's not yours? Because we've talked about, let's say the government is totally failing to do Mm -hmm. something and you are removing yourself from under their authority. You're going to say, I am vocally, physically, I'm separating myself. I no longer... um, adhere to the laws of this land i'm making my own land and these are the reasons why i'm stating them in the open mm-hmm. right and then well then now you're not under their authority anymore yeah. now maybe they can kind physically of. force you to be right and maybe you can be conquered mm-hmm. but morally you're no longer under that mm-hmm. authority um and that would be rebellion which yeah. sometimes is the right thing to do um so but if you're not going to rebel because the only way you can have vigilantism is if you are taking on authority to punish criminals while still being yeah. under the authority of another entity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's the question we, we have to ask ourselves. Is that ever the right thing? Because there's definitely the time to step up and say, okay, no further. This is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But that in and of itself precludes vigilante justice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you yeah. think? <clears throat> I think that there may be times where it is right or wrong. There's times where it's probably necessary. Because especially if your government's corrupt and they're not doing anything, there's judicial issues. Mm-hmm. If they're not doing their job and you're seeing things like we're seeing today, someone can walk into Walmart and steal, what, was what's the limit, like $1,000 worth Over of stuff? Over in California, yeah. yeah they that's in Cali. Yeah. Under there's, 900. It's got to be under 900. 900. There's multiple states now. Under right. $900 and they're not, you can't touch them. If you touch them, then you go to jail. Right. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's insane. Right. Yeah. Someone's stealing stuff from somebody else and you intervene and you are, right. you're punished. That's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, right so. or wrong, there are times where it's necessary, but I mean. Just don't get caught. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. don't get caught. <laughs> That's all there is to it. So, <laughs> are we, let, um, so let's, uh, let's do a thought experiment on a time that this would be, you know, acceptable. Now, of course, I considered, I thought about it. Um, didn't have to do anything but with the Kyle Rittenhouse situation um you know even even the the police in his home state almost didn't uh allow the extradition you know to for him to go to 
in under trial. They kept him for a couple of days, um, you know, because he turned himself in in his home his home state. You know, he well, he you know he lives right on the border, right? Because mm-hmm. there's uh, well, in which states were involved? Yeah, is it like like Wisconsin and Michigan or something? I don't yeah, know which ones are, he it lived. Was, he lived like Minnesota. ten minutes from the, which one the, the city where this happened. Did you say Kyle Reichman? Kyle Rittenhouse? Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse. I am not familiar with that. <gasps> oh, wow. I am not. Okay. That, that <laughs> uh, was an event that happened... Um, during the Black Lives Matter riots. Yeah, in BLM riots of 2020, um, like during the summer, there was there was some riot going on. Was it... Is it Waukesha? No, it was... No. Kenosha. Kenosha, Kenosha, Wisconsin. Yeah, Waukesha happened afterwards. Yeah, Kenosha, Wisconsin. So this kid, I, guess, I think he was, what, 17 or something 17 like that? years old. At the old. time. Um, he didn't live in that town, but he worked. <clears throat> he worked in that town, uh, his place of business uh, that he was he a lifeguard. For. Yeah, was was there, and him and a couple of his buddies, as well as other people too, it was, it was like a big group effort. Decided we're not going to let our town just get burned to the ground. So there had already been multiple days of rioting. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was and very the, very bad rioting. The police weren't doing anything. So he was there. He was. Uh, doing some some medical just like first aid type stuff for people that were injured and i uh, also had his his rifle there with him and uh at one point he was he uh was trying to stop people from pushing a a lit dumpster towards a gas station i believe yes <laughs> they were um, rolling a gas station burning yeah they had a, uh, they rolling had a, a, a dumpster towards a gas station yeah. and uh and they were also yelling like bring it to the fuel pumps like they were trying to burn down a, a they were gas gonna station. kill themselves <laughs> right <laughs> you don't do that <laughs> yeah they were they so he yeah he prevented that from happening and so the rioters were targeting him unbeknownst yeah. to him they were mad at him for stopping the big fire that they were trying to create because he went in and put the yeah. put the dumpster out with a fire extinguisher so they started chasing him now an interesting <laughs> note that shouldn't be important but i don't believe any of the people that were chasing him were black and he was not black either so it was like a blm riot but there was there's no B in the BLM part of that. And, yeah, for uh, this so, event. <laughs> yeah, he's he's being chased. And, of course, he, he has a semi-automatic rifle. He could just shoot them at, as he's being chased. But he, he decides he's going to try to run away. As he's running, different people assault him in, in various different methods. One guy comes up behind him and hits him in the head with a skateboard, I believe. Big um, skateboard. Yeah. yeah. There's a guy that comes, I think, and kicks him at some point. And there's another person with a, a pistol. And they... Whenever he's knocked down by one other person, I think this other person came up and and aimed his pistol at him, and Kyle shot him. He ended up shooting three people that night. Right, he shot. Um, yeah, there was three people. Uh, Rosenbaum uh, was the first, um, and he was a, uh, a convicted uh, pre- predator. Yeah. Um, yeah. and um, all of them were uh, felons. So that's very interesting. You know? Yeah. And they had uh, their, their guns illegally. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So he was getting chased by a mob, ran into an area. It looked like he was kind of stuck, couldn't get through. Um, someone fired a, a, a handgun uh, at him. He turned around and Rosenbaum was lunging for him. So he took a couple of shots, killed him instantly. Uh, and then he was doing, uh, he's trying to call 911. The, the mob starts chasing him again. He's running away towards the police. Someone hits him in the back of the head with a skateboard. He falls down. Uh, someone kicks him. He shoots that person. They die immediately. Uh, and then a third person pulls a handgun and aims at his head. And while he's on the ground, he shoots his bicep off. Um, and then he gets up and then he uh, gets to the police line. The police just wave him through. And then he tries to tries to turn himself in. He's got his hands up. He's like, hey. You know, I was involved in that. I need help. And they're like, just keep moving. They were a little too busy, you know, dealing with the riot. <laughs> so right. They just... And they just they just waved him past the police line, you know, um, and told him to go home. So he drove home and then uh, turned himself in to the local police at, you know, in his hometown. Mm-hmm. Let him know. It's like, hey, this is what happened. Yeah. I'm sure that there's going to be a trial. <laughs> <laughs> I've shot three people. Right. I've shot three people. And one of them I know for sure is dead. Um, and... So then it became, you know, a huge trial. But, um, I mean, they were, they were wanting his blood. I mean, I, they, it, it looked like it was not going to be a fair trial. It yeah, really it, looked bad. It came down, down to it. Like whenever they actually gave the verdict, nobody knew what the verdict was going to be. It was not clear, you know, what direction it was going to go. Like 
we knew that the jury was being uh, affected. They were being stalked multiple times whenever they were being mm-hmm. being brought back to their. Uh, they their, were being threatened by yeah. some yeah. groups. And he was he was being absolutely crucified by the media. Oh yeah, he oh, was yeah. he was a horrible racist, well, which doesn't the, make sense because there's a white guy that shot white people. But well, no, he's in racist. the me- the media said that yeah. he shot black people. Yeah, it was very interesting. A lot of people it. believed that until the the actual. Um, Whose is it's that? Not mine. That's yours. Ooh. Oh yeah, tons of people so believed offended. that uh, that it was black people had been shot by a white supremacist yeah. at the BLM, and he was getting away with it. Like that was the that was the story that the media was running with. Yeah, and of course the media had it kind of set up to where like one media said it once that he shot black people, but then of course they could take it down. But the other medias could make it sound like that, but of course they weren't the original source. So if anybody ever goes against them, and then a lot of other media were a little bit more careful, and they just kind of. Hinted, hinted at it, but they didn't directly say that he shot black people. But it always they said, seemed well, that way. You know, they white would say, man they shoots would say people. White supremacist shoots BLM protesters. BLM protesters. Yeah, right. So like you, 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 you kind of just it comes to your head, you know. Yeah. So so what you think. Um, but yeah, that was very interesting. And um, yeah, so a lot of people, you know, like the pol- the actual local police were very hesitant to let him be sent to the neighboring town because they're like, this is not going to be, this is not going to end well. And also, all this stuff was videotaped. Mm-hmm. Um, including a drone, an FBI drone, um, videotaped it, it with thermal from yeah. flying, in which they did not ever, somebody leaked that information to the jury and they were able to get the uh, the information. And it actually, that was probably the critical evidence that leaned it towards not guilty, which is what the, j- the jury found him not guilty Yeah. Um, after after a very long, wild trial. Now that y'all, uh, I just didn't recognize the name, but now they are talking about it. Yeah. I, I definitely remember the case. Uh, yeah. I mean, if someone's attacking you, you have the right to defend yourself. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And especially and, if they're like, if you said that someone shot at him, mm-hmm. once someone does something like that, you are at full capability to yeah. defend well, and, yourself. And my question is, you know, in the midst of the chaos and in the midst of self defense and presuming that we should still be innocent until proven guilty. Mm-hmm. I kind of question his, um, I guess, reasoning for turning himself in. Just go home. <laughs> well, his mom talked him into it. Like she had told him, like you got to, you know, no, just yeah. just go home. Don't say anything. Don't say anything to anybody. Yeah. Well, he is a minor. No, I understand. So you know, mm-hmm. and under certain circumstances, if you're the first, are you one trying of the to police, say that you shouldn't? Yeah, go ahead, cut it out. I just, I just need to know for a second what the rules are here. No, I'm just saying that he probably should have gone home and said nothing to nobody. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was videotaped everywhere. Yeah. I mean, you're coming home. Okay, so let them come and prove it. Right, right. I mean, it, it, under, under, I guess, normal circumstances, of course, if you trust the, the authority, you trust the police and everything, uh, then, you know, generally it's better for you to go to the police first. You get your story in first and say, this is what I did. I, you know, I did shoot my neighbor's dog. They might be calling you soon and complaining about it. I did it because of these reasons. And then when the neighbor calls, yeah. you know, then it they, had its jaws wrapped around my leg when I did it. Right. Yeah. Here's the yeah. marks. <laughs> so you, sometimes it's good to get there first and, and kind of defend yourself and say, hey, in case anybody mm-hmm. freaks out, this is what I did. I admit to this. And it was for this reason, you know, but of course the whole Anything you say can and will be used against you when they're when you right. don't trust the authority and right. you know that they're out to get you. Well, and in his case, right. yeah. you know, he was friends with the the local police. Um, you know, he was planning on being in law enforcement, um, and he did a lot of those. You know, the same things I did when I that's was. What, young. That's what most anarchists do, right? They want to be in law enforcement. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, he was an anarchist, right? Yeah. yeah, that's that's how he does things. Um, but you know, when I was uh, before I joined the guard, um, you know, when even as a young teenager, you know, I was doing work with the the local police and and the local guard doing you know fundraisers and drives and talking to them and i was very interested in getting involved in those you know entities and and learning about it and you know going to the the cpr class and you know he had done those things with the local police yeah um and so you know he felt a lot more comfortable with those people it's like hey these guys know me Mm -hmm. i know them i know that they're honorable people which of course it, it turned out to be they almost didn't let him out, right? Yeah. They, you but know, they, they, was, they got an extradition order, and then yeah. they, they they held on to him for a couple of days, and I'm like hey, maybe we won't. You know, it almost it was touch and go there for a minute. Yeah. Um, and 
Yeah. So that that's when you you know when you're thinking about things like that. So, but the, the reason I was bringing this up to begin with is, you know, in that scenario, I was thinking to myself as you know what what do we do as a as a society? Um, let's say he gets convicted, right? We have video evidence. You can watch the whole thing from start to finish. So it, it was very interesting. Where there's not really an argument on the material yeah. material that happened. Like what. What did the person do? It was, it was all, you know, what were you thinking? What did you perceive, right? But yeah. we know what happened. And, and nobody argued about what happened, you know? Right. You know, well, I mean, you know. I think I did. Well, They're like, oh, he wasn't actually armed. He didn't actually threaten you. And you can hear him threaten him on the video. It's like, yeah. you, you do know that the video had audio and we could, we could hear what he said. Well, I'm not talking about Fluffer Boy. <laughs> Everybody else and everyone else knew what was going on. <laughs> right. But, but that was the thing is, is, you know, the state brought charges that were... It clearly false charges. Yeah, very obvious. Very obviously false charges. So let's say that the jury of the civilian the civilian jury hadn't, you know, paid very close attention, watched all the videos carefully and came to their own conclusion. If mm-hmm. they had listened to the prosecutor and the way that he twisted what happened yeah. and had convicted Kyle Rittenhouse, you know, there was a lot of groups that had intended to go bust him out of jail. Right? Yeah. There was yeah. there was a there was a big movement. That was a line in the sand a lot of people drew. Because a lot of you, people did. You have situations that are kind of like that, but a lot less clear, and it's it's a lot harder to draw a line in the sand. You know, with the with the situation um, with George Floyd, and um, right. what, what was the name of the officer that was being tried for that? I can't remember right off. I don't remember off the top of my head. But with with that trial, it was a lot of people were, were kind of up in arms and, and freaked out about it, you know, on either side, but it was a little bit less clear. There wasn't, it wasn't so obvious. You know, there's, there's invisible chemical things going on. We don't know yeah, exactly. Have, have you all seen the autopsy? It was just released. I did. No, I have not. Yeah. Wasn't there a, uh, I forget the name of the drug, like fentanyl. 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 Oh, yeah. He had fentanyl. more than one drug. The autopsy oh, yeah, right. was released this past week and he was, was so loaded that he was going to die. I mean, yeah. there's no way he was not going to die. But the autopsy said there was absolutely no trauma to the neck, no trauma to the head, no mm. trauma to the um, esophagus. There was absolutely no trauma from the police officer. That wow. it was all drug induced. Wasn't there? Uh, no. Wasn't he saying that he couldn't breathe before the officer even got him on? Well, that's on why they the took him out of the car. <clears throat> yeah, he, he said couldn't he could. breathe because he was going into yeah. shock. He was like right. having a he panic attack, and yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, but so as things came out more slowly, it was more right. and more clear of like where where this kind of uh, you know falls. But it was a lot less clear initially, and it's still not near as clear as the Rittenhouse thing. The Rittenhouse, right. anybody that has watched it can give you the same answer. Generally. If if somebody is on you know an opposing side, they usually haven't seen the footage. Maybe they saw a couple right. of pictures that CNN put on their website. Exactly. You know, aside from that, so I mean, it's, it's super I haven't clear. seen a single person who watched the entirety of the footage that's available and then turned to me like, "Oh yeah, he was out there hunting people." Yeah, right. There, I haven't, and yeah. I I have talked to quite a few people who thought that, that was the case. They're like, "Well, you know, I don't know how he got off." Right. You know, this is guy, this white supremacist out there hunting black people. I'm like, somebody believed that. That, that yeah. was the story that they told me. It's like. How could you believe this? I realize there's a lot of lying going but on. But then the question is where, you know, supposedly there was all these people who were ready to go bust Rittenhouse out. If that had turned out right. wrongly, mm-hmm. where are they with the January 6th detainees? Right. The, that one is, I think, also muddy on purpose. I think they muddied it on purpose. I mean, you have people that need to be in jail because of what they did on January 6th. And you have people that absolutely don't. And it's it's way less clear cut than just one kid in his situation and what happened, you know. So you can't just say, oh, you let them all out, or you can't just say you throw them all in, you know. Then you have to learn each situation, and there's a lot of different situations, and not near as much data on each of them. So I think it's a lot. It doesn't serve as good as a a public line in the sand for everybody to choose, you know. But I understand where you're where you're going right. with that. So okay, let's but let's uh, let's drill in for a second here. Is uh. On the on the Rittenhouse situation, let's say that it had gone the other way, and he had been convicted mm-hmm. and went to jail, and the three percenters showed up and had an ultimatum. You know, there's eight of eight hundred of them out there, and they said, "Let him out, or we're taking him out." Yeah. Right now, that would be vigilante justice, right? Yeah, they're go, they're, they're subverting be, the justice system. We would we'd agree. That's not that's not a rebellion against the state entirely. That's yeah. vigilante justice. And now in that situation with the facts of the case that we know, you know, that we have video, this is a very clear cut case. Um, would that would that have been justified 
would that have been morally correct or would that have been un- unjustified? Or is that a rebellion? Is that, okay, that we're, we're, we're going to take him out, but also we're now our own group? You know, is that the moment mm-hmm. of breaking away? Because yeah. well, you have to ask your question, what are you going to do after you break him out? Right. You've got to have a plan. Yeah. yeah. W- I, what's I the like, plan for afterwards? I, I mean, like where is he going to go? What is he going to do? And then where are the people who broke him out? Where are they going to go? Right. What are they going to do? Yeah, with, with just plain old vigilante without without moving on to rebellion i think that is the issue you're you're saying that the system isn't working so we're going to ignore it but then you're just going to go back to it again like as if nothing ever happened the you know the police are still the police the governor's still the governor and we just carry on and i think that's not healthy i don't think that's the way it should work my only my only thought of when it may be acceptable is some sort of interim period you're like well we're not ready to to create a new state right now but also we have this issue right now and we can't let this issue be not addressed. We will go ahead and, and, and figure out a way to, to get a redress of grievances. But in this interim period, we have to do vigilante justice. I'm not saying that that's th- the case. I'm saying that's that's the only thing that I'm partial to, I think, is if you have the intention to go ahead and replace your system. But what do you do in the meantime? You know, I don't know. Yeah. So you've you've made it. You've made the mental decision. Mm-hmm. We are no longer under this this government, um, but we don't have another government to replace it with at the moment. Yeah. And for now, the temporary time, we're going to be we're not going to be calling the police. We're going to be taking care of our problems by ourselves. Yeah, and yeah, that, and it's, that's just it's a little weird to me. I still think that it's probably not the right way to handle it. It's something that kind of comes to mind, uh, a situation, I don't, I'm not super knowledgeable about this, but to my understanding, uh, with the signing of the Magna Carta in, in England, the situation that they were in is they realized they had a really terrible king, King John, you know, the, the Prince John from Robin Hood, and um, they didn't want to just kill the king and get a new dynasty and start from scratch. And I think, I'm assuming the reasoning for that is they thought that that's, that's kind of volatile and it's it may not be the the safest course of action. So they actually had some sort of civil war type situation. They cornered him. I think they had him in a barn and they, they had him at sword point and they said, you are our king and you have the legal authority to, to sign this document that we've written up and you will make it into law. It's called the Magna Carta, the big charter, big old piece of page, you know, and, uh, and it's going to take away a lot of his authority and it's going to give that authority. It's going to disperse it a little more. That's, that's the kind of the beginning of, of England going from absolute monarchy to more the constitutional monarchy that they are today. And, um, of course he signed it cause he was at sword point that they, they would have, you know, killed him otherwise, but they, they had some level of restraint. They didn't just go all the way to the end. They wanted redress of grievances. He wouldn't do it. So then they kind of forced redress of grievances without just, I mean, they still let him have the authority to, to sign that, that paper. I don't know. I, I just think that's kind of interesting that they, they had some level of restraint. They didn't just do a knee jerk reaction and just do something extreme. So I don't know if that's an example of how things should be handled. Um, they say you, uh, you know, go into the governor and say, all right, write up a pardon or we'll kill you. And that's how you take care of the Rittenhouse problem. That would I mean, be closer to it, it right? It seems like As you say, you're giving him an opportunity to still use his authority. Right. Whereas if you, you just say, hey, I know the governor's not going to do anything, kind of the situation with Absalom and, and King David, mm-hmm. you should go to King David and say, hey, you really have to deal with this situation. It's got to be dealt with, you know, and um, but still letting it be in his court to deal with it instead of just being presumptuous and going and taking it on to yourself. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a it's a it's a quandary and in, this is this is the problem of having authority that is not doing its job mm-hmm. is everyone under that authority has now has existential problems yeah. and you know same thing if you're a parent and you are not um you know parenting in a godly manner you're not making rules that are you know moral and just you know, you will cause huge stress on your children, yeah. you know, and those aren't easy decisions to make, you know, right. Cause when yeah. you, you know, when you sit day, you know, and you say, Hey, I'm no longer going to obey you because of eight years of whatever the problem is. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a problem because we're there. You're supposed to be under authority mm-hmm. and going against that is, is generally wrong. But of course, when, 
you are in the wrong as the authority and it has been brought up to you and you know you're in the wrong and you're continuing to do it, right? You're just, you are causing huge problems. Yeah. Big, big questions that, yeah, that aren't easy to answer. Right. And it can be scary because you don't want to mess uh, something like that up. You don't want to find yourself in some rebellion that you're not supposed to be in, you know, like you don't want right. to be the bad guy, you know, that's, you know, so yeah. It, and that's, that's why I think it's important for us to kind of know where we stand on it. And it's, it's something that I, I definitely lean one direction, but I don't know if I know for sure, you know, is it, is it absolutely never okay to do vigilante justice? Or like Hammond said, is there a couple of situations that you'll find yourself in that maybe generally it's wrong, but in a couple of handful of situations, you just, it's the right thing to do you know, and you just got to do it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. It's a little difficult. And of course, you know, I'm talking about, you know, we've, there's two different types of, of vigilante justice that we've brought up here. And one is punishing an evildoer. Mm -hmm. So say, let's say somebody murdered somebody, you know, it happened. No charges are being brought because the government is corrupt. Yeah. And you say, well, I'm going to go remove this murderer from society and you do it. Well, you've done it. It can't be undone. Yeah. Right. And justice is served. It's just, is there an right. additional problem to that? Right. You know? Um, and then on the other side of that, you have something like what we were talking about, the Rittenhouse situation. Let's say he was convicted of murder when he was not a murderer. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to step in and do vigilante justice there, much more complicated and difficult. Right. And so, you know, you're, you are going in, you are fighting directly against the authority. Now you have the problem of that can be taken away. You know, you can pull somebody out of jail. Yeah. And they can get arrested next week. Right. And that's right. what I was saying. What's what's the plan? What's the yeah. plan? So, so that's closer like to a rebellion. you're punishing, you know, right. somebody that didn't get punished, well, you've you've taken care of it. Right. And so as long as you don't tell anybody what your plans are <laughs> and right. you, you just do it and you never talk about it, you've got a pretty good chance of not having you know, right. the, the hammer of government coming back on you. Uh, but whereas if you go break out the people who were mm -hmm. involved yeah. in January 6th. That's they know who they are. They know yeah. where they live. They know who their family members are. I mean, what's the plan? Right. What are you going to do that's, afterwards? Right. That's, and that's the thing is, is once you've done that, you, you've said this is over. Right. We aren't, you we're never going just back go to society. Back. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you most know. governments, whenever any sort of vigilanteism does pop up, they do take, immediate offense to it you know because it's it's right. a it's a an attack against their authority right. you know right. even if it's i guess we could say negative justice you know punishing somebody you know they're going to want to make sure no 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 no, we're the only ones that do that and go after the person that but does not that. always i mean their their resolve to go after that may not be as great as the other situation right and actually that's mm -hmm. the case um if you look throughout history um you know when people and groups of people have taken it upon themselves to punish evildoers that slip through the cracks, you know, kill, uh, take care, take out a murderer, take out mm -hmm. a rapist, something like that. Um, there is not a lot of appetite to find them and, you know, kill them and take them out, you know, or put them in prison. Like, there's not a lot of resources devoted to, you know, finding that out. And if that person doesn't go on and kill other people, mm -hmm. if it's a one time thing and they say, you know what, they, you know, that serial killer just kind of disappeared and we don't know where he is. And it's a cold case. Right. Right. That happens a lot more often than let's say the government says, hey, these are political people we don't like mm -hmm. and we are going to punish them even though we know it's wrong. Right. They can, they know. So like, we're going to we're going to punish them even though we know they're no, no, it's wrong. And then another group comes in and says, no, you're doing this. You know, yeah. you are the perpetrator and we are going to remove them from your hands. It is a lot more bold that, and direct. Yeah, that go, they there there is no end that will escalate forever until one of right. the parties is dead. You have so, got to bring that, that to a conclusion. Yeah. So right. when you start that, you have to know this is going to be, you know, re right. revolution, rebellion, right. civil war, whatever it is. We, we're we're going to be rewriting history now. Whereas right. if well, we go and punish somebody that the government failed to punish adequately. Mm hmm then many times you can just go back to the status quo and, you know, you're not at a rewrite history moment. Yeah. Right. Which, you know, Ruby Ridge, you know, those sorts of events. I don't know if y'all are familiar with. You Very know, it's, familiar. It's, it's happened multiple times. We've had multiple times where, you know, federal agents tried the to. The massacre kick. at Waco. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, but even when, even when the Fed steps down, 
you know, BLM, whereas Bureau of Land Management, <laughs> even when they back off because there's 400 people in a field telling them, if you take another step forward, we're going to shoot you, right? And then they back down. Well, quietly, over the course of five years, right. all of these people, you know, there has been a huge amount of these people have been assassinated. Mm. Um, there was one guy who got shot driving through a toll booth by a high-powered rifle. Nobody knows what happened. There was never any investigation. Eh, things happen. This is, People this, get shot through the windshield with a high-powered rifle. All the time. Driving through a toll booth all Every the time. Every day. You know, right? And, um, it is, right, so this... It you know, sounds familiar. Is this something that's, that, that happened, like, is that out west with some, there's been somebody's land? Like, they were trying to, to like, just take his land or something uh, like that? Yeah, there was a cattle grazing rights and... Water rights. Right, water rights. Mm-hmm. And there's been other... This has happened in multiple states, multiple yeah. instances. There's six or seven times where... Uh, the, the government was uh, overstepping their authority drastically, and the local community said, no, we're just – just no. This we will fight, right? Mm-hmm. We will stand together and fight. And the, then the community came together, and you know they were heavily armed, and the government backed down. But what happens is slowly these people get raided in the middle of the night, right? right? Um, and them and their kids go to prison, yeah. and they disappear. Right, you, they, they, they never, back, the government no backs away and then gives it a little bit of time. Wait till all and the media then goes they down. They just begin to pick them off one at a yeah. time. Yeah, and, and that, that has, I mean, how do you fight against that? That's, like, that's very hard. To, that's and you that's can't. why they do that tactic. Right. Yeah. Because they know they know that they're wrong. They know that they've overstepped their authority. They know that the town is right. And even in some of these situations, you know, the sheriff is standing out there with the rancher, saying, "You." You know, Bureau of Land Management are wrong, mm-hmm. and if you continue to perpetrate these evil acts against these people, and they start shooting at you, I'm going to be with them, not with yeah. you. Right? That has happened. Um, but so you know that there isn't a, you know, there's not. If they have a trial, if they arrest them and have a trial with their peers in their local town, mm-hmm. they're going to be acquitted immediately. I mean, the, the, that's why they change venue. The people that would be on the jury are the people that have a rifle standing next to them. Right. Yeah. Like, when the sheriff is at their house defending it from you, yeah. you know, you're not going to. So then, of course. But then what? Are, what is that? That's that's extra legal. You know, they're not following the laws of the land. Mm hmm. You know, so what? It, what is that? When, when, the, when the government itself, when is the, the government one doing itself, it? right. you I mean, know, that's just corruption, comes right? In. Whenever it, it's, it's perverting its own justice system, right? You know, it has a justice system that it's supposed to be right. implementing. But when the and government it's doesn't implement its own, so if you as a yeah. citizen step outside the justice system, it's vig- vigilantism. Yeah. When the government itself steps outside of the justice system and does thing, you know, assassinations yeah. of c- citizens, right? Which yeah. has happened. Yeah, we'd usually... What do we call that? We just we call normally that, call it corruption. Is that just kind corruption? of a catch-all? You could call it perverted justice, but I mean... Right. Because corruption also has things like bribes and all kinds of other stuff that right. gets thrown into that bucket. But, but I mean, generally, they all happen relatively simultaneously. If you have a corrupt country, it kind of just does them all, you know? <laughs> Takes out the people it doesn't like. It also, you know, pays off things or, or gets gets right. stuff. So, okay, so a, a little bit of a different way of uh, asking this, and I, I ask this because of the way that people respond to certain things. Uh, we talked on the first episode about, um, there's that man in Louisiana that, that shoots his son's uh, molester in the head uh, whenever the, the, that, that guy's being, right. being brought to justice. He hasn't been tried yet, but he's being brought into the state, you know, getting off the plane. And um, <laughs> I've noticed whenever I sh- have showed people that video, generally people have like a, a kind of cheer type reaction because like it's justice being served. And I think it feels humans, like justice. Humans naturally have a desire to see justice. We hate right. it when we see an injustice and we like it when, oh, OK, it's like a, like a relief whenever we see justice. And we know that that's that guy had it coming to him. You know what I mean? So right. when it comes I mean, he was to, caught with the kid. Yeah. So like, I mean, it, it's the facts of the case are not in question yeah, at all. Every, everybody knew. So it, it, it seemed, it seemed like when people see that, it's almost like they have some sort of relief. And also another, another, another thing that I've heard people say is like, let's say uh, just in discussion, people are talking about the Ku Klux Klan or something. Something I've heard people say as well, of course, obviously the core of what they do is was wrong and, and back in the day you know what they were doing was horrible but there was this little side thing that they seem to approve of uh, as well as other groups like the kkk and stuff that they also uh did vigilante justice unrelated to racial situations like let's say there's somebody in the town that's beaten his wife you know and everybody kind of knows it. It, it it kind of kind of talk gets around you know then those local those local members go and they rough him up one night you know they they beat him to a bloody pulp and then, you know, the next day everybody pretends like they don't know who did it. 
And it's just, and this, this has happened, you know, throughout history and in different areas of, of the world and by different, you know, groups, local groups and stuff like that to just kind of take justice into your own hands when you could go and bring it to court, but you just don't. And it seems that some people think that there's a quality about that that seems better almost. Like it's better that somebody gets roughed up, you know, in the middle of the night behind their house and left as a bloody pulp. It's better to do that than just to inform the the sheriff or inform whoever, and then you go through the legal system and the guy gets punished. Even if the guy got punished sufficiently, it's almost like, the style is better. I don't know if y'all have an right. opinion on that. Well, but a lot of times, it number one, it takes time, and it takes evidence, and many times, further damage is caused waiting for that justice to be delivered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's going to be beat how many more times Yeah, just because you report it. Now they got to open a case and then something else is going to have to happen. And, you know, many times it's going to take her going to the hospital before mm-hmm. something is done. Right. And then, of course, you have the situation where, let's say, it's just her word against his. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, maybe there was, you know, bruising and all this stuff. But, of course, by the time trial rolls around, it's not there. Mm-hmm. And if she takes the stand, first of all, there's fear. You know, yeah. is she going to tell the truth? If we she has seen, to go home with him, she might how not. Many time, yeah. How and many if times? If he gets off and I have to go home with him, you know, right. what worse is going to happen? But even right. the other consideration is that a man who will do that, it affects many other areas in his life, at his job, other relationships. That right. That's a cancer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times women will stay with those men. And even defend them. I mean, some of the worst calls you can be on as a first responder is a domestic disturbance. And right. they often get beat up by the people that are being beat up. Right. And there's, um, well, and there's a lot of psychological damage that goes into that. Right. And, and so we, there's you know. a whole lot of questions there. But, you know, the the system takes a long time for justice to be served, if it's ever served. While the cancer of his behavior and his attitude will continue to affect the community at work, at church, in every sphere that he's in. And so right. kind of to the point, if there's a group of men that can quietly take him aside and take care of things and straighten out his attitude, then there's kind of a, an idea that it's going to not only help out that home life, but it's going to help out right. other areas because he's going to be afraid dealt mm-hmm. with. Do you well, think and there's oh, that you got to take into account um, if you don't say you don't you know, you don't say, oh, somebody was talking to us. You know, she let us know, you know, you show up and you're an, you're anonymous. You know, let's say you wearing a mask. He doesn't know who you are. Mm-hmm. And you say we noticed some problems. Nobody said anything. You know, you can't blame her. Mm-hmm. We noticed. We're not going to tell you where we noticed. We noticed Mm -hmm. some problems and we're going to take care of it. And if it ever happens again, it'll be worse. And so in those types of situations, they don't know where the accusation came from. Now they know they're beating their wife, Mm -hmm. but they don't know who told who. They don't know who it is that showed up, but there's more than one person. And apparently they're local people. And, you know, in that type of situation, a lot of people feel, whether it's true or not, that that will have a better long term outcome Mm -hmm. because this person is going to be afraid to abuse people out in public, even if there's no police, even if there's no cameras, you know, because a lot of people will say, hey, there's, there's no cameras. We're by ourselves in the woods, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, well, you know, maybe that neighbor that lives, you know, within hollering distance is the one that rounded up the posse the first time. If they hear screaming, they don't need a lot of evidence. They're going to show up again. They already know, they already believe that you're, you yeah. know, a wife beater. And, and so, no, you know, that's the feeling that people have, whether it's true or not, yeah. we could discuss it. But I think that is the a lot of the feeling. So I think I think there's there's kind of a bit of a spectrum. You have uh, like summary judgment, like this quick action that needs to be taken. And on the other end of it, you have due process. Now, there is another alternative, which is what we talked about in the first episode about how when things just drag on and drag on, it's not because there's due process. And sometimes it's even breaking the due process. The due process says you have to have a speedy trial. And like you had uh, mentioned, Jack, like, you know, it takes 11 years or 10 years or something like that to get your quote unquote speedy trial. That's breaking due process. But due process does, I mean, the the whole idea is, you know, we're going to make sure we do each step as we're supposed to, because we don't want to punish somebody falsely. 
you know, we, that's, right. that's, that's like a big deal. You know, we, you're, you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. And I feel like this summary judgment of like, we got to do this kind of right now. We don't want to wait around. Like, where is the balance on there? Is like a, is there a, a line or do we need to change our justice system to allow for certain types of summary judgment? So you can do something like, all right, you know, for certain types of cases, you're we'll, not going to be able to codify that. Yeah. yeah. And, or it used to be like, Hey, you're going to get caned in the square. <laughs> Yeah. Or what if you, you know, <laughs> you can codify general things. I mean, what if you had, let's say like a town and they're like in, in this town, if, you know, a woman or a child says that they were, you know, beaten, then we'll, we just, we just cane the guy in the square, like you said. And that's part of our law. You know, we don't have any sort of like, now that could get way out of hand. I mean, we right, see with course. the whole Me Too movement, right. that's what happened. Like people just will always believe someone when they say that they're a victim and then you have people right. that use which that strategically. Which is why we have due process. You know, so I feel like you get this like, gets this mad issue. at their dad and they say, I don't like the, that I'm not allowed to go out with my friends on yeah. Friday. So I'm going to tell the, the town council that yeah. you beat me. And and right. now and now dad's going to get caned in the town square. So well, I wonder there, if that happens there's with, a problem. with like our, you know, what we were talking about before with, with KKK type situations, unrelated to racial situations, just where they, are, they, they take it upon themselves to enforce that sort of uh, vigilante justice. I wonder if people have abused that. If you've had wives that said that their husband was beating them and they told somebody to hope it would get out there and it did get out there and then he mm-hmm. gets, you know, beat to a bloody pulp for no good reason. Like, is that, you know, is that a reason to not go that route and say, Hey, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to deal of with course, that stuff. Of course, know? that's a reason not to. And there's yeah. a reason we have due process for yeah. that, you know, and, and it's, this is the, the decision that we have to make as a society, which in our laws that what is codified is we'd rather 10 guilty people go free than one innocent person suffer. Yeah. Right. That's, that's the general principle of our legal system is innocent until proven guilty, proven beyond a reasonable doubt for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure that they're guilty before there's punishment dealt out by the state. Yeah. Especially when it comes to big punishment, like, you know, long-term pr- imprisonment or death, death or right. things like that. I one mean, of the most good, especially. One of the good things about getting roughing somebody up is if you know what you're doing and you do it right, you can cause a lot of pain without a lot of long-term damage. So let's say you beat a guy up and he shouldn't have been beat up. Mm-hmm. Well, if he if he fully recovers... You can just say sorry. <laughs> you can apologize. You can repent, right? Yeah. You say, well, yeah, that... Of course, it, it was one night, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like he's locked up for five years. So that's one thing. Yeah. And if you didn't break things where they can't heal, you know, you say, look, we thought you were beating your wife. It turns out, you know, she was out there spreading rumors, trying to cause trouble. And we're all sorry. So we beat her up. (laughs) (laughs) Let let the wives handle that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That'd be much worse. (laughs) uh, That's like I was saying earlier. Sometimes there are situations where that is necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes the government does need, does not need to be having its hands in every situation. There are some times where it's inefficient and impractical, and there that's yeah. th- there are some flaws with the judicial system. Yeah, even <clears throat> at a point of position where it's not corrupt, where it is good, there are still and there are always going to be flaws. But yeah. there are terms in the like the part of due process, like Dan was saying earlier, that issue is going to keep continuing until it is proven to a point where legal system has to step in. Mm-hmm. But how, what is the limit? Where is the line where yeah. that gets taken in? It's hard to. And especially in the situation with things like abuse is probably the hardest one to do. They, they right. seem to be the thing with, with, the, with the least defined line. I mean, some stuff is very clear. You know, somebody gets right. a, a beat, a, a shot in the street or whatever. That's very clear. But like what's going on in the house is is less clear. Right. Right. It's very and, difficult. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. And then and, inside the family is one thing, too. So, you know, let's say let's say you, you know are treating people wrong inside of the family, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Let's say you're being verbally abusive and, you know, mm-hmm. you're mistreating your people. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a beat down from one of your brothers if that's the problem, right? If if if, if something escalates to that point. And, and I don't think that, that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, and I was just thinking while, while uh, Hammond was talking that, I mean, we do have a line at some point where we say we don't bother the government with this. I mean, with 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 parents spanking their children, I mean, you don't – you don't bring your child to, you know, the, your, your local judge to say, hey, I think he needs a spanking. Can you decide for me? And then can you 
can you spank him? Like, no, right. like you just spank your own kid as a parent, and that's your job. Of course, it gets really confusing not whenever in every state. Well, yeah. yeah, and apparently not yeah. in every country. Yeah, nowadays. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, there is a line of like, obviously, this is just a family matter, and like right. you're talking about, if you have like, let's say, a adult or even semi adults, you have like teenagers, and they're you know they got issues with each other and beating each other up. Like, we don't usually count that as assault, you know, and even. Back in the oldie times when people were having like a duel, as long as you have the duel in a, a correct and prescribed manner, nobody's nobody's at fault when when you kill somebody in a duel because you both agreed to it. You know, so if, if teenagers are fighting over some girl and they beat, you know, they're beating each other up, like generally people don't have no, but there's not going to be assault charges. You no, know, not brought. these days. But well, yeah. I mean, it used to be used where, to. you know, uh, two boys could settle things in a fight. But now they're going to bring charges against both of them. Right. Yeah. Right. And it, there needs to be a level of discernment where people can handle their issues on their own without that legal intervention. And now that the nowadays the the government has basically just taken that away from people. Yeah. And it's caught. And I mean, not to go down the whole rabbit trail, but people aren't thinking for themselves because the government's doing it for them. Yeah. But it's just like it, we're getting to a point where. You know, things now just like, well, should I wipe my butt or should I talk to the government to wipe my butt? Because yeah. just the way that, yeah, that the they're becoming taking control. They're getting more and more granular, like they're becoming right. the parent. They're deciding right. if you can right. or can't punish your the, child. The nanny or, state. Yeah. And well, the, the idea that they get so offended if you take things into your own hands that now you are going to be punished by the government mm -hmm. for even self-defense. Yeah. Or like right. the woman who is in jail now because... She was kidnapped and sex trafficked for a number of years, and when she had an opportunity to escape and killed her captor and escaped from that lifestyle, yeah. she's being charged with murder and is in jail right. because she escaped yeah. from Which that. Like, just, how dare you escape? Yeah. It's just yeah. your, to, uh, to your human, like... Understanding, right. we know that that's not right. We know that's not the way to deal with it. Right, and also nowadays you see it a lot with public school. Used to, a parent could go in there and see and be able to listen in to what the teacher is teaching them because they have a right to know mm -hmm. what is being taught to my kids. Yeah, but nowadays, yeah, nowadays, and there's a local town just down the road. We all know. Good job. Uh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> they've put up a fence recently within the past year. So you can't even and see it, what's happening on the grounds. Well, and you can kind of see, but the kids are literally locked into the campus. If they leave, there could be legal issues. Not could be. There will be legal issues. Will be legal but issues. But now, like I was saying, used to the parents who have a right to know what their kids are being taught, they even look at the campus wrong nowadays saying, I want to go in there and they don't call the office ahead of time. They're arrested mm. and they can be charged with trespassing and other things when their kid is being held hostage and more than likely being indoctrinated by these yeah. by these schools. And it's it's quite honestly just disgusting. Mm -hmm. So it seems like there's there's levels of crime and problems and levels of where you get it addressed. And I think even this is a, a this is addressed partially in the Bible as well. I think in First Corinthians, um, whenever Paul is reaming them out for their many errors, um, and he was saying that they these this church these Christians are taking each other to law with their problems that they're having with each other right. instead of dealing with it in the church first. And of course, some things. Uh, I feel like a, a church is not set up to handle like, okay, well, well, Billy, you know, killed my wife. Like, well, that's not a church kind of situation. That's like a, this is a legal situation. But when it comes to issues that people have with each other, they're just skipping to this next step of I'm going to, I'm going to yeah, civil sue suit. Them in, yeah. I'm going to sue them in court over this issue that we have when like, no, 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 no. Like you're a Christian. You should be able to handle that. You should be able to handle it one-on-one. -on -one. And if you can't, there should be somebody wise and spiritual in your church, an elder that you can go to and say, hey, we're having this issue. Can you help us sort it out? And they can do that. And he was he was complaining that they don't do that. You know, so it does look like there is, you know, there's a kind of a size of an issue and then how it's supposed to be addressed. So if, if, a, if a child is acting up, well, the parent needs to, to discipline them. That's not a state issue. You know, maybe if two teenage boys are fighting over a, a girl, well, maybe they just need a tussle a little bit and, and, and bloody some lips and they'll get over it and they can move on. And that's the, where it needs to be handled, you know, but then where do you draw the line of like, you know, physical assault and, you know, that sort of thing. You know, theft. You know. That's yeah. another thing, you know, yeah. theft is, you know, let's say somebody steals your truck and they live across town and you see the truck 
you know, legally you're supposed to report it and, you know, get the truck, have them show up, but then they, they don't, and you know, there's all these problems now. So, you know, you, you get in and you grab your truck and you go. Right. And yeah. so, you know, there's, that has been happening more because, um, you know, theft isn't yeah. prosecuted. And, and once again, you know, is it, now is that vigilante justice grabbing your own stuff back? I feel like that's not because you're not really in, uh, exacting a punishment on the person or depends on the state you, know, you live right? in. It depends on the state. Uh-huh. They would consider that vigilante. Sorry. Yeah. So that's that's why we just gotta, tell them you that your, your truck is less than nine hundred dollars. <laughs> then you can walk <laughs> off with it. <laughs> Problem yeah. solved. Right. And the, you know, but the, there is you know there is more and more appetite yeah. for vigilante justice because a lack of prosecution of crimes i think Mm -hmm. a trend that we see and and we'll wrap this up pretty soon but i think a trend that we see is government likes to bring things up higher in the levels so right now we see that you know city government doesn't handle most situations you know and then you got to go up higher if you actually have an issue with somebody even if it's your next door neighbor you're probably going to go to the 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 county court if you're going to do some small claims type situation you know and then but i'll Whenever there's any sort of crime, it's usually state or federal. Like it's it's it seems that that things are are generally affecting the higher levels of government, and maybe that's been like a, a slow process of of the higher levels le- levels absorbing the lower levels' responsibilities. And maybe people would feel better. We'd have that like local small town justice if the town itself you know did something. And they right. maybe it's not quite so so uh, refined and, and, and whatnot. And maybe it is a little bit crude and maybe, maybe we, well, I think tarring and feathering people is like very dangerous and, and a way to kill people because hot tars were really bad. But the, the concept of doing something a little bit crude like that, like tarring and feathering somebody, cause we know that this guy, you know, did whatever. And we, we want to make a, 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 an example of him in town mm-hmm. and everybody gets that satisfied feeling. And it's still following the legal system because this town, this is how we deal with stuff legally speaking. And we don't have to go in, into the, you know, the right. back alleys and, and beat somebody up to solve a problem. I don't know. I just, I'm yeah. not big on vigilante justice. I don't know if y'all have noticed. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I understand. And, um, yeah. you know, we have problems, you know, just like, you know, local town where things are stolen, things are reported and zero effort taken to investigate, yeah. you know, uh, so people. So we need I'd to pre- carve out our own little city and <laughs> incorporate it, do it the right way. Yeah. And, and, and take vote that. in a mayor and vote in a mm-hmm. uh, chief of police and vote in the laws and get back to back to old town. Yeah. Get back to Mayberry. Yeah. <laughs> but your county will have something to say about it and the state will have something to say about it. Yeah. And I guess right. one, one Why more. Why can't we just have... Some some just basic justice without having to rebel. Why can't we have that? Why can't <laughs> we're not bad people? Why can't we just have? Why can't we just follow the Constitution? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. We're, we're a very rebellious show. We like to start off with reading the the law of the land, <laughs> right? And, and reminiscing about and the giving, times when it was applied, yeah, giving it honor, the honor that it's due. Yeah, I mean we're we're not pro rebelliousness here. You know, I, yeah. I, and there was a time when you could elect your way out of problems. Mm-hmm. You could vote things to happen the way you wanted them to. But I think we're beyond that. I, I, I don't believe that we can vote our way out of the mess we're in. We're pretty deep. I think this will be a, a topic for a, another podcast, maybe in, uh, multiple, another, another episode. And and that would be, I, I think what you should do is is you start with your list um the, the the first step on the on the redress of grievances you should you should go about even if it's formalities even if it's i'm going to i'm going to you know write the president ask him to do something i'm going to write my congressman ask them to do something and you you already know that they're going to say no you maybe you know your president your congressman and you know that they're against this but you're like i'm just going to do the formality and say that i did it you know and actually go through the process and not just kind of skip to the end but right. you know i don't know should we but, start the ball rolling on that i've been thinking about it with this whole fbi thing it's that, catastrophically bad because it's, it's perfectly set up. It's I easy know. to do it I for know. for redress of grievances because you you can say, well, that's under the president's purview. It's it's his job. He needs to handle it. So you can you can. I mean, they have a website and they take emails. So you can just send him an email and, one. and say, hey, could you please deal with this? He's not going to respond. You don't need him to. You just you did your job. And then you can you know ask the 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 house to impeach him. And if they don't, you ask the court if they want to chime in. And they don't want to chime in, then you 
anyways, this will be it. That's, that's another episode. Yeah. So anyways, I, I think that was, that was, that was a good uh, discussion. It's, it's a, some, some moral questions obviously are, are straightforward, but this is one that I've, I've had a little bit more of a difficulty with. I, I, yeah. I lean on the side of, I don't think vigilante justice is ever the right thing, but then I got those, those questions like you, you like Hammond is saying, you know, just every once in a while you have a situation like, I just don't exactly know how else to handle that, you know? So, you know. but the advice is don't tell anyone before. <laughs> this is terrible. Advice. Don't. Or, or after. after. <laughs> oh, and you know, you, people might take your advice. And well, you, yeah. you don't tell anybody. You you make up in your own mind what you're going to do. You want to give any more advice to that? Like, I don't yeah. know, make sure that you're doing the right thing. You make sure just, you're doing <laughs> the right thing, but yeah. do it. And then that's the end of it. Is this advice what? or is this just a thought you have? It's just a thought. Okay. Just, just yeah. a random thought. Just a random you, thought. You don't it's, suggest it's anybody do this right now. Right. <laughs> 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 great. Just, wow! Uh, just don't tell anybody. I have a host <laughs> of that, friends. <laughs> on that, on that lovely note, uh, we'll uh, we'll peace out and see y'all later, folks. See y'all later. <laughs>